lovely geeky folk out there in internet land. Welcome to Stace and Barry in the morning. We disappeared for two months, but now we're back. We're all up in your ears doing songs and shit about geeky things. And I always run out of stuff to sing. <clears throat> Hi, <laughs> I'm the Stace from Stace and Barry in the morning. And joining me on this mystical Saturday morning sofa of good stuff is my good friend, Barry Nuge Cake Nugent. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Hey, happy birthday to you. Hi in the back. Happy birthday to you. Here all evening. Happy birthday. Tip the waiter. That was for you, Stace. Oh, thank you, Barry. It sounded a little bit like you might have given yourself a hernia in the middle there. <laughs> I, I, I won't lie. This might be a short episode as I feel my larynx might have fallen out. Mm. My ass. <laughs> what a beautiful image for yeah. people to wake up to. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, look at the time. Let's pop on a bit of Stace and Barry. Everything's falling out of my ass. <laughs> Not everything, just my larynx. Just your larynx. Oh, yeah. well, that's that's fine then. Everything else is where it should be. It's all good. Cool. cool. Well, it's. I'm glad that all of your internal organs are where they should be. <laughs> the trunk is packed. It's all good. The trunk is packed. Hey, that sounds like a euphemism. Um, Moving on. F- yeah, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the birthday wishes. It's okay. Did you have a, oh, you have a good so birthday? Um, yeah, I did. <laughs> Yeah, I really did. I um took a week off work, spent one of those days entirely in my jammies reading comic books and watching movies. Uh, and then I spent another day taking myself out for a lovely Stacey day of haircut and lunch and Pokemon hunting. And then me and my mum went to see Body Posse Panda's uh, Never Say Diet Club stage show, which was absolutely fucking amazing. You will be hearing more about that later. Ooh. And... um. On my actual birthday, I went out for lunch with my mom and then dinner with my mum and Rich and Mike. And then on Friday, I got pissed. And then on Saturday, I got pissed. Uh, but on Sunday, I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, all in all, a, a pretty good week, except for the Sunday where, you know, when you get one of those colds that like, you don't really have the block nose and the sneezing, but it's all in your throat and also all of your limbs just feel like they don't want to move. Yeah. Yeah, that was me. I was like, I feel sorry for it. I can't even lift this cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, bit bit pathetic, really, but, you know. But you're soldiering on through today. That's the important thing. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Whoop. So, do you want to do the trumpet thing? Oh, I mean, I can try, but because of the aforementioned throat-related sickness, it might sound like a trumpet died on the toilet. Do you want to try the trumpet thing? Okay. <clears throat> oh, that was pretty good for a sick lady, I've got to say. Oh, it wasn't too bad. I stole it, though. It's a, it's the theme tune to Between Two Ferns. <laughs> oh, Okay. Uh, which was just in my head because I saw the movie last week and it was good. Anyway, cool. <laughs> uh, what segment are we doing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can uh, we can start a pick of Fortnite. Okie dokie. Why don't you go first? Because I've already talked quite a lot and my throat hurts. I'm going to have a little bit of this Fanta. <laughs> okay. And I've just I've just realised that I'm sitting in this incredibly hot office and I haven't got a drink. That was clever, mm-hmm. Nige. That is um, I mean, we can insert a little bit of the Spanish flea if you want to go and get yourself a drink. <laughs> I'm just going to run and get myself a Coke. I'll be back in okay. 30 seconds. God, that went really wrong. <laughs> Back. Yay! Hello. Oh, it's better. <laughs> Coca-Cola, original taste since 1886. Sponsors Stace and Barry in the morning for no money whatsoever. <laughs> Coke. Yeah, I don't think Coke have realised they're sponsoring <laughs> Stace and Barry in the morning. <laughs> I've got Fanta. Is that a Coke-related brand? I think it might be. Probably. Yeah, probably. More than likely. 
Uh, right, pick a fortnight. So my um, pick a fortnight. So I was away last week on holiday. So I took my trusty iPad and trusty Kindle and um, read a shed load of comics. And one of the comics that actually really sort of uh, grabbed me because it was something I'd not really read before. It's not usually the sort of comic I would go for. It's um, it's called The Legend of La Mariposa, the Demon Gauntlet slash. I've just I just added the slash for dramatic effect. You get the gist. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a it's a wrestling comic. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, that, well, that's thrown me because I wouldn't expect you to say that. No. So it's um it's like Mex it's the Mexican wrestling. Yeah. Lucha Lucha Libre. I think that's yeah. What call it. So yeah. So when I sort of saw this originally, it got sort of sent into sort of GS because the uh, guy behind it, who is a fellow called James Lawrence, is doing a Kickstarter at the moment for it, of which he has raised half his total. Um, it's nice. got 18 days to go. But the com- but this was actually started out as a webcomic, so he's trying to raise money to do a print run. So the comic is, is done, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I'll read the blurb. As a rookie luchadora la mariposa has everything to prove seeking an initiation into the illustrious sons of justice la mariposa is dispatched on a quest to defeat a quartet of demo- demonic warriors and return with their enchanted mask as proof of victory however not as all as it seems as the plucky purple powerhouse god that's a phrase finds <laughs> herself entangled in a web of secrets and ambitions spanning generations la mariposa must learn the hard way that a warrior's road is not always running a straight line slash for dramatic effect mm. Now this is a it's an all ages comic, which is another reason why I sort of I was drawn to it because there's not enough all ages comics out there, I think. And I absolutely loved it. And one of the reasons I loved it, which is why I keep trying to get you to read this, is <laughs> the main so the main character is called La Mariposa. But I just kept thinking, This is this is Stace. Ah, what? <laughs> this is just Stace. It's just it's just Stace in a Mexican wrestler's mask and outfit <laughs> oh that's rad oh i'm reading that after we finish recording then <laughs> um you know not i mean when i say so i mean she doesn't wear glasses and look exactly like you but it's it's just something about her that's automatically because automatically i liked her automatically she just made me think of, of you Aww. um and it is was because she's it's, rad it's because she's rad she yeah, is i mean <laughs> I, I tell you what you wouldn't fuck about with her she don't mess about <laughs> but she this comic of I mean I was laughing out loud when I was reading it the art is lovely it's really sort of bright colorful which is kind of what you want for um all ages do you remember the, the phoenix is it phoenix comic yeah 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 this is the sort of title that you would you would imagine that would end up there yeah but I mean it's 200 pages so it's a fair old beast um but and it's so she's so obviously the plot is she has to go travel to different parts of the world to fight these four demons and then get their masks and each demon is uh obviously slightly different has different abilities so she's got to kind of um adjust her own skills to the person that she's fighting so it's so it's basically for wrestling matches but they have these two commentators these two under commentators and they're just some of the lines they come out of are just great Oh yeah, that's it. So she goes to fight the first person who's first and the, she goes to fight the first demon who's like a water demon. And uh this is sort of massive sort of like she dives in and there's um there's two sharks there and um, something happens and basically and one of the sharks turns to the other shark and she and he just goes, Nice Carl, real nice. I don't know why, <laughs> but I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> no, I like that too. <laughs> I just couldn't I couldn't stop laughing um and that's the sort of tone of the humor it's very tongue-in-cheek but there's some cracking one-liners in it and it's actually a really good story with some a few things happening that I, I didn't I didn't see coming yeah so I would thoroughly recommend this to people obviously I was lucky enough to be sent a uh, review copy pdf copy but if you head over to the kickstarter page um, I'll put the link in the show notes and put some cash down and help him reach his target because I think it's a worthy goal. And I intend to. I'm going to I'm going to pledge, put some money towards it, even though I've read it. Um, <laughs> just just because I'd, I'd love to see this get printed. Um, oh, excellent. Yeah. And I think the minimum you can put is a fiver and a fiver will get you a digital copy anyway. 
So, jobs are good. Top notch. Yeah. Excellent. I'm definitely going to give that a read now. And it sounds entirely narcissistic, but it is 100% because you said she reminds you of me. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm that person who's always looking in the background at comics and thinking, hmm, could I get away with claiming that that's me? <laughs> <laughs> Raging narcissist. Um, my pick of the fortnight, I wasn't sure if I was allowed to pick a stage show that has now finished its run as a, as a thing. <laughs> it's not really pop culture, but I really want to talk about it. So uh, I've picked two things, and I'll briefly talk about the stage show because okay. it's over. Um. As I mentioned before, me and my mum went to see Body Posse Panda's Never Say Diet Club show, which uh, Body Posse Panda is a body positivity activist who I found on Instagram because of the wonderful Danny Abram, who was like, fill your life with positivity and wonderment and pointed me at a bunch of awesome people on the Internet. Um, And she wrote a book called Body Positive Power, which is about how um, diet culture is a fucking nightmare and how... Uh, people especially women but most people have been taught to be at war at their bodies and um, spend lots of mental energy and time and money on trying to fix these you know perceived flaws like cellulite or you know being a bit flabby or whatever Um, and the whole stage show it's like it's so awesome because it's like a combination of stand-up comedy like an awesome TED talk on how to fucking love yourself and stop giving a shit what anybody else has to say about you and your business and part musical parodies about how great food is (laughs) okay yeah, I had no idea what to expect of it when I went, but my mum bought me tickets for my birthday because she knows how much I love Body Posse Panda, and we both had a brilliant night, and we also both came out and went, God, I feel like I could fucking, you know, fight a titan. <laughs> we were both, like, so geared up, like, yes, I am brilliant, actually. <laughs> like, it's, um, it was kind of great. So um, if that ever tours again, which I imagine it will, because I think she only did, like, five or six shows, um, and they were all like a lot of them were sold out. So I can't see why she wouldn't do it some more if she gets the opportunity. I will go again <laughs> gladly. Right. Um, so, yeah, if you get the chance to see the Never Say Diet Club, then please do. Um, my actual technical choice, because I don't think a stage show counts, is the Between Two Ferns movie, which came out on Netflix last week. Have you ever seen Between Two Ferns at all anyway? No, I have no idea what it, other than obviously the phrase if i stood between two ferns Uh uh-huh well (laughs) the uh i would recommend you go and watch some of the shorter versions of this and then you'll be able to tell whether the movie will be up your alley or not um between two ferns is like a sort of weird little sketch that was on the funny or die website i think where zach galifianakis plays like an exaggerated version of himself and he interviews famous people whilst they're both sat between two ferns um, and the whole joke of it is that he's a dreadful interviewer and half of the time he's actually really offensive to the people that come on the show. I'm pretty sure he did an episode with Obama. <laughs> like, it was just the weirdest fucking thing. Um, so if you enjoy sort of like dry and sarcastic humour and also like silly slapstick humour, then I think, and also Zach Galifianakis's face because he's all over this shit, um, then you will enjoy... the the shorts and you will enjoy the movie because the movie is a hundred percent what you would expect of a longer version of between two ferns um hundred percent the exact same humor lauren lapkus is in it and she plays zach's um personal assistant and she is fucking hilarious um i love her anyway i think she's wonderful and the great thing about it as well is that a lot like I, can't, I don't know exactly how much, but a large portion of the movie is improvised. So the fact that people manage to keep their shit together and not just <laughs> fall about laughing is amazing to me. There are some bloopers at the end where people just like Benedict Cumberbatch can't stop laughing uh, because Zach Galifianakis has said something like really stupid or offensive. It's just really light hearted, silly fun. And I loved it. It's really good. Cool. There you go. Pick of the fortnight. I did a dance, but my chair's squeaky, so I shouldn't. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like you'll be editing this and all you'll hear is like, "Eh, eh, 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 eh," in the background. Sorry. No, nobody wants it. I'm sorry. But yeah. Zach Galifianakis, thumbs up. I will give it a look-see. 
Do you want some more trumpets? Trumpets, please. Bring cool. on the trumpets. Uh, what do I want to do trumpet noise wise? That was the Sonic intro. <laughs> was it? It was. Okay, I'll take your word for it. How fucking dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, it was approximating it. I did miss a few notes because I am okay. poo. you got to give me that, bruv. Uh, should, on that note, should we do some musical musings? <laughs> do it. Hit it. Cool. Well, uh, I'm sticking on a Sonic theme. Last Saturday, Rich, Key, Mike and I went to a place in Birmingham called Kong's, which is a place that I feel like I would hate on a Saturday evening because it seemed to get all dark and loud music But um, during the afternoon, which is when we went, um, it was a bar that had craft beer and um, weird hamburgers and arcade games. So it was pretty rad. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I had a little go on uh, on a turtles one. I wasn't very good at it. We uh we didn't get very far. I was trying I was trying to do a kill of Bebop and Rocksteady and it wasn't working. They just kept <laughs> they just kept murdering me. Um played some Mortal Kombat, played some Street Fighter, um yeah. So we ended up uh, sinking quite a lot of Dosh <laughs> <laughs> into some arcade machines and it got me listening to a lot of like video game soundtracks since then because I was like oh chip tune and like 8-bit music and stuff is like really cool and I love it um and I found a playlist on Spotify that's just chocker with all sorts of video game music from like you know the more recent like big sweeping orchestral stuff by you know, people who do movie soundtracks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. All the way to, like, yeah, like, proper, like, old-school Mario Brothers. <laughs> Duke oh, <cool>. Deets. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I happened across what I think might be the best piece of music in any Sonic the Hedgehog game, which is Chemical Plant Act 1. <laughs> um is that from the first game? It's from the first game, and it's the one that goes... Like that, and it's totally cool and rad and very chemical planty. And like, it's one of those songs where I just heard it and I immediately felt like I was a kid again, sitting in my bedroom, like Sonic in the shit out of my Saturday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's my pick. That's my musical musing because like, it's rad. I've got to stop saying rad, but I don't want to. It is rad. <laughs> Could turn this into a drinking contest, and every time you say rad, someone has to take a drink. I'm going to say rad all the more, rad, rad, rad. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, my musical music is slightly connected to yours in that I was having a bit of a, um 80s throwback where I was on that, I'll start again, that, that every so often, um, I think everyone does it, you end up realising you've spent like four hours on YouTube and you don't know what you've actually been watching on YouTube. <laughs> yeah <laughs> just random clips of films and tv shows and and that leads to something else so anyway i went down this this very deep youtube hole and they ended up stumbling across it was 80s it was like a 80s um tv show children's tv show intros cartoons specifically nice. <laughs> and obviously that's my jam because i'm an 80s kid and um i'd stumbled across the intro for this show and two things i took away from it one how did i never watch this show because it looks fucking awesome and two has one of the coolest soundtracks for (laughs) coolest intros i've heard just for (laughs) just for the lyrics so i was gonna i was gonna attempt to sing it but i'm not going to (laughs) i found it on my phone i'm gonna turn it up loud to see if you can hear it okay and what i'll say before it starts is see if you can count how many times a whip cracks (laughs) <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. See if it is this one. Hang on. Can you hear that? Yeah, just about. <laughs> Rip crack. Can you feel the thunder inside? Saber Rider. Make the lightning crack as you ride. What a line. Oh, wow. 
I'm going to stop that now. What a line. So I'm going to read boss. <laughs> I'm going to read those lyrics again. So lyrics go, can you feel the thunder inside, Saber Rider? Make the lightning crack as you ride, Saber Rider. I mean, that needs to be like my music. That's going to be on my alarm when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> I feel like it's just your theme tune now. <laughs> it is my theme tune. Now. I, I kind of came across it, and then, and when you see the actual, um, the actual video that goes with it as well, you're like, my god, this show looks. It's like a, there's there's robot horses just flying in the sky. There's like lightning cracking everywhere. It just looks awesome. Nice. I've never heard of it before. <laughs> no. No, the, the actual yeah. show is called, obviously, Saber Rider and the Star Sheriffs. Never heard of it. It looks kind of mangery as well. Mm. I love how, like, a lot of theme tunes back in the day would just, like, tell you the story of the thing. <laughs> or they would just be, like, full-blown three-minute songs. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just like, here's the thing that's happening now. Uh, this is your life, I guess. <laughs> I mean, just you just don't get themes like that anymore. You really don't. I mean... That's not to say that some themes aren't good. No. Uh, but, you know, is the lightning going to crack when you ride in any it's, other theme? I don't think it is. It's not. It's not. I don't think, don't think it is. So, <sighs> such to be <laughs> current cartoons. <laughs> yeah. Apart yeah. from the current cartoon we're going to be reviewing next. Hey, all for oh, a second, mate. Oh, cool, blimey. And now I'm going to ruin it with some trumpets. <laughs> Trumpets. Can you feel the thunder inside? Pick the light and crack as you ride. <laughs> we could go on tour, just go. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to see just you singing a song and me occasionally going. Whoosh. I could see it now. It's just like this massive auditorium and it's all dark mm-hmm. and it's just like. No one can see anything. And the spotlight comes on, and it's I'm sitting. Of thunder. Yeah, and I'm sitting on the stool, and I go like, "Can you feel the thunder inside?" And then another light comes on. You're in the corner, and you go, "Saber ride," <laughs> and it flashes back to me. It's like, "Make lightning crack as you ride." Flashes back to stage. Saber ride. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> telling you, we we'll, we will clean up. We quit oh, our mate. jobs, travel the world. So many tickets sold. <laughs> so many tickets sold already. Already. Records broken. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, we can dream, can't we? <laughs> oh, so you did an awesome segue, so I guess you can carry on with that then. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. So our... Um... So we are big fans of a cartoon series called... Um... Final Space. Yeah, we are. Um, which has just wrapped up its second season, which hasn't aired here yet because it's been on them. Um, I think season one came on to Netflix. It did indeed. Um, and I believe season two will be dropping on Netflix at some stage. I don't know when. I, I had a word of Bucky hooked me up with this because um, I couldn't wait for it. No, nope, me neither. Because <laughs> uh, you either put me on to Final Space in the first place. Yeah, because I am just that cool. You are, uh, <laughs> are just that cool. Yeah. Um, and it's a absolute. It's one of those shows that when I first started watching it, I just thought it. I thought it was going to turn out to be a little bit like I don't know Futurama. Um, yeah. And don't get me wrong, I like I liked Futurama, but I was looking for something that just wasn't going to be just you know comedy, comedy, comedy. Mm. And this show was that first season was so epic. Yep. Like, there were episodes where I was actually in tears by the end of the episode. Yeah, same. Um, phenomenal soundtrack as well in certain parts of the first season as well. And a cracking story. It was really good. But it also had a lot of humour, and a lot of the humour actually landed. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it is one of those things where if you don't jibe with the main character's sort of style of humour, then it's not going to be for you. Yeah. But it is 100% up my street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it's wonderful. Um, before we get cracking on series two, how how spoilery do we want or not want to get? We would so obviously because we haven't got a lot of time anyway. Um, <laughs> um, we will we will keep this. I'd like to keep this spoiler free if we can. Okay. Yeah, okay. I don't think it's fair for the people in the in the kids at home. 
fair dues. Well, I so series two, I've got to admit, I felt like the first couple of episodes sort of uh, dribbled out of the gate. <laughs> Um, I, because the first series was so epic, I think my expectations were higher. Because, um, like, obviously, when I first started watching the, the previous series, I hadn't I hadn't actually watched any trailers or anything. It was just a case of it was something that Rich got, and he was like, "Hey, you might like this. Here's the thing to watch." Um, so obviously, by season two, we already know all the characters, all the setup is done. I know what the humor is, and I know what I'm expecting from it now. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I didn't feel like it busted out of the gate as much as I wanted it to. Um, but by the end of the series, let's just say there were tissues involved because yes, I did a lot more crying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I literally just watched the last episode like an hour before we started recording, and I had a little little sniffly tear time <laughs> yeah I I, I I i have to say actually no i'll say i'll talk about finale in a minute but um i yeah because we talked about after the first episode and i i agreed with you it probably even took me slightly longer to get into it mm. i found like the first sort of three maybe four episodes i was i was enjoying it it was but it wasn't and it like wasn't said, on that level it was on previously, no, so yeah. No, no, nowhere, no, nowhere near. And it didn't take me long in the first season before I was hooked. Yeah. Whereas I think if I came in, I mean, obviously, if I'd come into the second season, I wouldn't know who, who anyone was. But I think part of it was because they introduced some new characters. And mm. to a certain extent, I didn't feel that they needed them until yeah. they un- until we got kind of you know, about halfway through, and then I was like, okay, I'm I'm on board with them now. Yeah. But I think because I had to sort of get used to them again, it was a bit, it almost felt a little bit like a soft reset, which given how the first season ended, it, like you said, you, you should, if you look at it like a, a graph, you expect it to just keep going up. Yeah. With the epicness because of what's happened, whereas it kind of felt like it sort of leveled out for a few episodes before it started to pick up again. Mm. Um, But when it picked up, oh baby <laughs> it, it, it picked its shit up <laughs> oh god just i mean it's really hard to talk about some of the sequences that happen in it without spoiling yeah. but like i mean there's some super creative character design in this um at voice acting wise as well i don't think anything for this year is going to top keith david referring to somebody as a freaking dick bag um, <laughs> Oh my god, I almost died laughing. <laughs> Keith David is fucking immense in this. Yeah. Like yeah. properly like he's got all of the gravitas and then some I was yeah. like in awe of his performance, it's amazing. Um but like everybody's bringing their A game and like you say from the sort of yeah, like episode 4 or 5 onwards it just really starts not like it's it's not one of those shows where every episode is like totes emoche uh, yeah. which is good because i think then it would it would just end up being like well you know why do i care at this point yeah um but it it, it socks you in the heart at just the right time for it to have the maximum impact <laughs> yeah. um yeah and this series was like you say I, I i took a bit of time to warm to the new characters i didn't mind the one that ron funches does the voice of because he's like an adorable like it's almost like an oaf, like he's just like a big, lumbering, adorable dude. There's one was... with the, the gun for an arm. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. no, he, yeah, I did, yeah, I did. Like uh, yeah, I liked him from the start. I wasn't so sure of, um, I can't remember anybody's names. This is really terrible. The the girly character with the, the pink hair and the powers. Um, yeah, I wasn't 100% sure of her. I did like Clarence quite a lot because he's an absolute dick. But I kind of <laughs> yeah. sometimes love a bit of a dick. That's not how, what I meant to say, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. let's just, just leave that there. Yeah, let's just leave it there. But yeah, like, and the, the finale for series two was just like, because uh, it, it, it sets you up even more for series three than series one did for two. Yeah. And I'm just like, I need it. I need it now. There better be a fucking third one and it better be fucking soon. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was... Oh. I mean, I, obviously, I plan to watch it again when it comes on. Me too. Netflix. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I watched the finale today, and I just thought, what was really great about it was that there was a lot of stuff that had been set up throughout the season, which paid off in the last episode. Mm. And one thing in sort of particular, 
I was kind of thinking, oh, I'm not sure why a particular character is so upset. And then there's a little bit of a voiceover and suddenly I was like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And then what followed afterwards, I I had to rewind and watch again because I was too busy fist bumping the air and going, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what it does really, really well, this show, is last minute escapes when everything's going to shit. Yeah. And everyone's got a like, everyone's got a job to do. They just do that so well, and the music always ramps up an extra notch. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was the, the second half of this season was just brilliant. Yeah, um, I did actually go and have a look on Spotify to see if there was a soundtrack at all because I was thinking oh yeah, I think that might have been my musical musings, but it, it doesn't appear to be on there, uh, oh, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah. See, I I think. I, I personally would say it's not it's not a criticism because the music's still really good, but I would have said that the music for season one was better. Yeah, I mean, I think um, there's a lot of repeated themes from season one in season two, uh, and some of them maybe don't stand out in the same way that they did the first time we heard them because the scenes that they were in were so impactful. Uh, maybe, yeah dancing around spoilers like nobody's business <laughs> hey, like professionals we are <laughs> in it though um but yeah there are some bits of music in it that are genuinely like yeah amazing i don't know who does the soundtrack for it actually i should have uh i should have had a look at that yeah but um yeah I, I am so so in for a season three and if there isn't one i will go on a strike somewhere <laughs> <laughs> just thought i don't know send some spoons to a tv network or something whatever it is that you do when things get cancelled that you love <laughs> well apparently um he says he's got enough for six seasons oh okay um Ooh. but he but he also said he he's got an ending in mind if he knows he's gonna get cancelled okay well, that's interesting so that, that's good to know but i, I would lo- i'd rather see him do six seasons yeah I hope it's one of those things as well, though, where, like, once they get to the sixth season, then that's it. Yeah. Um, Because I think when you start adding, like, tacking extra crap on to a story that you'd already resolved, it's like Gravity Falls. I absolutely fucking love that cartoon, like, so much. Uh, But it, it, that was the story that they wanted to tell with it, and that's where they've left it. And I think, yeah, good. (laughs) That's not on Netflix, is it? I don't think so, no, because it's a Disney thing. Because I tried, I've tried to sort of, because a few people have told me to watch it. Yeah. Um, and I managed to find an episode on YouTube, but it was when they do that sort of really small screen, so you can't really see anything. But um, I quite like, I quite like the look of it. Um, it. It is really good. It's another one of those ones. I mean, to go a bit off on a tangent, but it is another one of those ones where it's, it's very funny. It's a bit more kid friendly than Final Space is. Um, yeah. but it is very funny. But then occasionally things will happen, and you're like, oh God, my heart. <laughs> right <laughs> why <laughs> um but yeah i am so all over final space it's just insane yeah i love so it so much if you've not seen it and you're looking for a bit of cartoon action and that said wrong um then yeah you need you need to get on that it's got a real i would say if you wanted to compare it to something i suppose film wise um and and i think certainly more this season they sort of double down on it um it, it definitely has a Guardians of, Guardians of Galaxy vibe. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. Ah, final space, though. Thumbs up for Slurpees. Thumbs up. So, shall we wrap up? As I've I lost mean... Stone. What were you uh, going to say? <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I think, uh, I think I've said everything I'm going to say before I cough up a lung, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it's coming. <clears throat> oh, God. Yeah. Let's let's blow this fascist popsicle stand. Hey, if you yeah. want, if you want to contact us, do a tweet at Stacey's Parlour or at Geek Syndicate. Send an email to Barry at gmail dot com, uh, or I don't know, write your message on a paper plane and throw it at your window and see if it gets to us. Perhaps, don't know. Depends where you live. I'm not telling. I'm not giving you my address. Like I'm just saying, it depends where you live. Anywho, love you all. Enjoy your breakfast and see you soon. And remember. When it's quiet and there's no one outside, maybe you'll be able to feel the thunder inside and then make the lightning crack as you ride. 
I genuinely thought you were going to say something creepy then, like maybe when you're alone and it's and you know it's cold outside or dark outside, maybe there's actually another person there and you just can't see them and they're going to murder you in your sleep. <laughs> Bye everyone. <laughs> I was like, oh. um, sorry. Bye. I am in the house on my own right now. So anyway, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna check behind. Me. No, I'm good. <laughs>